Hello and welcome back. Today we're picking up a Death Guard Plague Surgeon. And we're going to be doing this up in my custom Warbands colors, the Liquifactor. So this is going to be pretty bright, pretty poppy, and you may recognize this from some of my other videos. That is okay, I've been on kind of a tear going through my backlog, so I thought I'd show you how I adapt this to just different minis. I'm going to start off here with the airbrush. We're going to use Iosin Green, Necrotite Green, and a bit of Golden Yellow to get some green layers set up first. So, to begin with, what I'm going to do is load that airbrush with a little bit of Iosin Green, this is from P3, and a little bit of Flow Improver. I like to have about a 1 to 1 ratio at least for this, and what we're going to do is go in and hit all of the flat metallic panels with a little bit of this green, and kind of start building it up. Now. When I'm building up through the green layers, I'm building for light, so I'm imagining where most of my light is coming from, and I'm kind of applying the green in smaller and smaller concentric areas towards where that light should be. Um, I'm kind of going with the default sort of lighting here, which is in front of and slightly above the mini, which isn't necessarily directly down. It gives me a little bit more character in front, shows off their face and front details. So let's speed this up just a little bit. Once we're happy with that base layer, I'm going to go in with the next layer. This is going to be Necrotite Green, and you'll notice there's still a little bit of that green left over from the Iosin step. Not a big deal. It actually helps the transition just a little bit. So like I said, we're going to go in a smaller concentric area here. I'm also starting to shoot the tangent on a couple of things. Uh, the divide over the foot is a good one to do that on, and I'm kind of just building up some light on the backpack as well. Across the top, across the top of the shoulders and those ridges down the back of the leg plates, those are a really great place to hip with just a little bit of light on the ends of them, leaving a bit of that recess shaded. All right, the final step here for the green, we're gonna come in with our golden yellow, and this is actually just gonna enhance the green that we've laid down already. We wanna hit this at the very hottest points, so just bring it in where you think light is gonna be reflecting the most and kind of focus it in on those areas. This is going to really brighten up that green. You can see that popping through already. All right, now that we've got our green base coated in with the airbrush, we are going to go back and base coat in the cloth areas on this miniature. So he's wearing kind of a robe, a bit of an apron, and a hood. So we're gonna hit all of these with some Vallejo model color violet using our hand brush and just getting a nice thick base coat down here. Now this is gonna be very flat and once we're done with it, we'll enhance it with the airbrush. All right, skipping ahead, you can see we've got all of that violet base coated out and we're gonna move on to our next step, which is actually gonna be doing a little bit of shading. We're going to get out some of our Citadel Druki Violet. I've got this in a dropper bottle just for ease of use, and I'm going to put that out on a piece of plastic. And then once we've done that, we're going to start hitting various bits of the armor and the robe with the Druki Violet. So the reason that I put it out on plastic instead of a wet palette is just to make sure that it doesn't separate and absorb too much water but we do need to make sure that we get it used up before it dries. So you can see that I'm going into the recess areas of the, uh, of the robe here, of the cloak, of the uh, cloth areas, and I'm hitting that with that Drew Key Violet. Now that raw Drew Key Violet's gonna be nice and matte when it dries, so just keep that in mind, but we're basically just going in wherever we think shadow will fall on this cloth. All 
right, let's get that airbrush out again. I'm going to load it up with Sunset Purple that you can see here. And we're going to go back in and hit that cloth. Now, I'm deftly avoiding all of the green areas that we've airbrushed before. And I'm focusing purely on the cloth. So I'm going low and slow. I'm going very easy on this. And I'm kind of starting in on bringing up the highlights. I want to bring out the edges and ridges of the cloth, anywhere where it's folding as well as just kind of in general the top of the hood here as well. And once we're at this point, we're going to bring in Emperor's Children as our next step. This will be our final airbrush highlight for the purple. So I'm going to hit the very edges, very fringes, very ridges, and kind of focus on those. And we will finish this up with a little bit of brush touch-up, but this is going to give us the base tone for our violet purple tone. my favorite colors here. I'm going to load this up as a final step. This is Nightshade Purple, and I use Nightshade Purple on both the violet and the green tones here. It makes a fantastic shade for both, and in fact it makes a fantastic shadow for a lot of different colors. So what I'm going to do here is bring it into the recesses, just like before with the Drew Key Violet. This will be just a bit more darker, and where I want it a little bit more intense on the shadow. I'm going to hit the sides of the hood with this as well and kind of up under the kind of apron area. Even though this is sped up quite a bit, uh, you might notice that I'm hitting little areas, little bits, little pieces here, including the green areas. You can use this same nightshade purple as a shadow tone on the green that we've set up. So if anything seems a little too intense or a little too bright, just knock it right back down with this nightshade purple. If you get a little bit too much on there, just step it back through the green.
So before we're completely done with the airbrushing, I'm actually going to do a little bit of airbrushing here on both the sword and the Narthosium drill. Uh, I'm getting out what's known as Silly Putty. This is a very non-reactive, non-adhesive masking material that's most commonly used as a children's toy. And in fact, you can pick it up pretty cheap at a lot of general or department stores um, in, the, in the toy aisle. Uh, you can also get it at a lot of hobby stores as well, uh, and it may be sold under different names in different places. I'm not entirely sure about that, but <clears throat> the main thing is it's not adhesive, doesn't react with paint underneath, and it makes a great masking material that's reusable over and over. So what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of generally blocking off the areas where we've already airbrushed so I don't get any overspray. A lot of times I'm just kind of taking it easy and playing it by, playing it by ear on where my overspray goes, just kind of generally avoiding spraying stuff back towards the model where I can, but sometimes it gets a little bit tough, especially on details like these weapons here, so I am going to mask those off just slightly. Alright, now that I'm ready, I'm going to load up my airbrush as well as my wet palette with a little bit of paint here to set up our tones. I'm going to go in first with Nightshade Purple and darken in all of our areas to a near black. And then we're going to start off by airbrushing a little bit of that Vallejo model color violet that we set down as a base tone earlier. Alright, in this case we're going to go a little bit different with our violet tone. We're actually going to bring in some Vallejo model color blue violet. I tend to use these for weapons or glow effects in my liquefactor scheme, so we're going to do the same here. You notice I'm hitting that drill at a very high angle, so the underside of the ridges stay pretty dark where the top side is getting most of the color. And I'm also kind of tending to make the glow slash the color of the sword kind of towards the outer tip a little bit and we're going to play around with that sword just a bit. Just another one of those edge tones I like. This is Citadel Blue Horror. We're going to bring this in and we're going to hit the very tips, very high ridges of both that Narthosium drill as well as the sword here. So I'm taking these at extreme angles, trying to get them looking pretty good. I'm shooting the tangent a bit on the sword to give it a little bit of a crossfade, a little bit of depth along the edge of it, kind of bring out that ridge since there is a little bit of three-dimensional depth to it. But there is also some cracking, some growth within, so we're going to have to highlight that out in a bit. Just gonna take care of this little metal bit up here really quickly, and we're gonna do this by hand. I'm hitting this with some of our uh, Vallejo model color violet just to set it up. As I mentioned before, the Silly Putty's not adhesive, so it just kind of pulls apart, pulls right off. Just kind of avoiding pulling on any of the more fragile details of the model. And there we go, we've got all of our airbrush and taking care of. Alright, there's a few yellow bits here, or at least bone-like bits here that we're going to take care of. And we're going to start off by base coating those in with a little bit of Pro Acryl Mahogany. That's mostly going to be the fly iconography on him, so there's a bit here on his arms, there's some skulls on the shoulder pad as well as the Narthosium, and we're just going to base those in for now.
Moving right along on blocking in different tones here, we're going to take some of our Vallejo Metal Color Steel, and we are going to hit the areas of trim on his armor. So the biggest areas here are obviously the shoulder pads. They've got large amounts of trim, and there's bits and pieces along the arms and legs here, as well as the Narthosium to pick out. Another thing to note on the Plague Surgeon, he has a lot of different little vials and uh, a bunch of different needles so those are other spots where you might want to bring in some metallics kind of give it an old school surgical look Alright, next up we're going to break out some more of that Druki Violet yet again and just hit a number of areas here. There's notably some tears and some holes in his cloak and robe, so we're going to make sure that we fill those in appropriately. I'm also going to hit some of the ridges and edges here in the armor, so there are pockmarks in the green that I'm filling in with a bit of this Druki Violet, as well as just hitting the edge recesses of the trim that we laid down with steel, that Druki Violet will make a very nice shade tone. couple things to note that may have gotten missed in the earlier video. We had started to shade up the horn a little bit with Averlin Sunset and a bit of ivory. We'll actually get back to that later on. And we also base coated in a number of skulls using Bloodfest Crimson from Scale 75 Fantasy and Games line. Um, we also went ahead and put together the gradient on that little piece of purple along the top of the speaker looking thing as well as a couple of the tubes coming off the Narthosium. We use the same uh, violet-purple-pink combo that we used on the robe, so it looks fairly similar, but we just did it by hand. Notice that we went for more of a cloth texture on the robe, we went for metallic texture on the little piece along the top, and on the tubes it's just a very soft gradient. The rope and maggots along its front are the same gradient that we're using using Mahogany, Averland Sunset, and a bit of Ivory, just in case. These are missed a little bit in our video recording, but obviously you'll want to know those little details. That's how we're kind of bringing yellow into the scheme. Oh, and why not? One last airbrush step. Let's go ahead and do the horn on his shoulder. We're going to use some Averland Sunset and some Ivory. We already laid down some Mahogany as a base coat and put in a little bit of Averland Sunset and Mahogany earlier by hand off screen, but I'm going to go back in and touch that up. So I'm going to really solidify this out with some Averland Sunset, about two thirds to three quarters of the way down the horn. And then I'll do the same thing with the ivory, probably doing the top third to top quarter of the horn.
Once I'm done with the airbrushing, I'm actually going to hit up the tip of that horn and the ridges a little bit, do a little bit of an edge highlight to catch the dimensions, the edges, the corners here, and the tip with just a little bit of that ivory and a little bit of Avalon Sunset mixed in. All right, those tears and gouges and edges in the cloth, we're actually gonna go back with Sunset Purple and Emperor's Children and use, use mixes thereof to get edge highlights around those. Now, you'll wanna use the Sunset Purple in the darkest of areas and then build that up to Emperor's Children in the lightest of areas. If you need a little extra help, a little bit of Fulgrim Pink might help out. That will get you a near white pink. Alright, don't be afraid to go back to that nightshade purple and work in some of the shadows if you feel like they haven't been darkened enough by the airbrush work or if you need a little bit of correction. Alright, there's a couple of tubes and conduits. Like I mentioned, we painted one earlier. We're just using our Violet, Sunset Purple, and Emperor's Children Pink combination to get those knocked out, so you can do the same at this point. So there's a little bit of growth in the sword and we're gonna do the same thing here. So there's a little bit in the middle of this that looks like it's cracking through the sword. We're gonna block that in using our violet, our sunset purple and our emperor's children pink. Meanwhile, we're gonna use our blue horror and blue violet colors that we had before on the sword and use those to edge the various bits where it's kind of cracked about. We're gonna hit the bottom edge to make it look like lights falling downwards a little bit. And we're just going to work that real easy. We're also going to give the same blue-violet and blue-horror treatment to the drill. So we're going to bring out the ridges of the drill just a little bit using those and kind of bringing that blue horror to the very front. So there are a number of vials and needles, etc. around this model what I am planning on doing is filling them with a blue purple liquid so we're gonna use our violet our blue violet and our blue horror I basically make them all black and then halfway up or a little bit more I bring in violet and then towards the top where it meets the black I gradiate in just a little bit of that blue violet and then I make almost a line with the blue horror around where the level is to indicate that there is a bit of liquid in there. Now if it is a larger vial and that black area is fairly large and visible you might want to add a little bit of a shine mark with a gray but these are fairly small so we're keeping them light. I am going in very lightly with a little bit of that same steel metallic as well and we've hit the tops and edges of these, so we're using we're using violets, we're using blues, and we're using steels to do all of the needles and vials. Thank you. 
We're going to go ahead and start hitting the eye and the face on the shoulder plate. You may have noticed that we hit the back end of the sword with our classic purple sunset, uh, sunset purple, violet, and emperor's children pink. We're going to do something a little bit similar on some of the other details here. The same thing happened on the tongue that's sticking out of the shoulder plate, but for right now we're just laying some ivory in where the sclera of the eye is. All right, we're going to start working up another part of this, which is going to be some of the skull tones and dead flesh tones. So the skull up here, the dead head on the back, and the face under the hood, we've based in Bloodfest Crimson. We're now actually going back over it with Brain Eater Azure with a little bit of that crimson mixed in and kind of building up to almost a pure azure in some of the higher areas, leaving a little bit of that kind of purpley crimson tone underneath in the shaded areas. All right, for the next part of that, I'm going to take in some Resurrection Flesh. And that is going to be the high tone here on our skull. So if you need some extra high points, you might bring in a little bit of white and mix that in with that flesh. Or an even paler kind of off-white. But this is what we're going to place over the top of the skull here on the top. And we're also going to place some of the flesh over the nose and eye ridges on the face. <laughs> As mentioned before, we're going to hit the head up here on the back as well. So we're going to take that through the same process. Bloodfest Crimson, Brain Eater Azure, and then follow that up with Resurrection Flesh. That gives us a nice undead, desaturated, kind of bloodless look. We're also doing the same thing for a tiny little skull right there, if you're wondering. Kind of take my time on this head a little bit. It's a little bit tough. The lips and the eyes are sewn shut, so I kind of go over them a few different times and kind of rework it a little bit. And I also add in a little bit of that azure and crimson back in when I think I've brought it up a little bit too much. So this is a great place to practice some of your flesh tones. This is kind of a non-important piece of the mini, but it is really cool looking if you get it locked in. So spend as much or as little time as you want, but I think these are great little details to get some really good real world practice in. All right, remember that eye that we were talking about? Let's go ahead and hit that up. I'm going to hit it with a dot of our VMC Violet, add a little bit of blue violet to it, and then a dot of black in the middle, and at the very end, a very small specular highlight of titanium white. Now this isn't very clear in the video, so I'm actually going to skip ahead a little bit, but just think about this as a circle within a circle within a circle. Um, some great tutorials on eyes out there, and hopefully in the near future I'll make one for you as well. back up using a little bit of that ivory and Avalon sunset we had out before you can hit the teeth on the side here as well and that will bring those up just slightly and you can see we've got a pretty distinct face minus some highlights in the green that being said let's go ahead and bring out some of the ridges on the face and the shoulder as well as just doing the edge highlights over the entire model what we're going to do here is use a bit of our necrotite green as well as golden yellow. You can potentially use 
bright yellow green from Pro Acryl as well. And we're just gonna lightly hit all of the edges here. Now on the face part, we're gonna get some of those ridges with very light applications of that green and that yellow. The yellow more towards where the light should appear, kind of the higher areas and in the brighter spots of the green where the Necrotite green makes a great contrast against the darker areas. Don't be afraid to get aggressive with the lining and do as much or as little as you want. Normally you want to show off more where the light should be hitting an edge and kind of glinting off of it a little bit, but you can get really stylistic and a little bit more cartoony if you go a little bit harder in the paint, I guess, that's a way to say it, uh, on doing your edge highlights. So it's as much or as little as you want here. I like to go heavy. Alright, we're going to go into some non-metallic gold here, just a little bit. There's a few trinkets and bits and bobs on our surgeon, and you can see the list of paints that we're using for this. Matte Black, Hull Red, Averland Sunset, Golden Yellow, and Ivory, respectively. That's Army Painter, Vallejo Model Color, Citadel, Pro Acryl, and Pro Acryl. The reason that I am kind of skipping through this a little bit is I've done some non-metallic gold in some of my other videos. I'd recommend checking out the bloat drone that we've done for our other death guard for some real specifics and some larger areas to see really kind of how i break that out but we're going to hit the fly emblem on the arm as well as a couple of little hanging fly emblems My non-metallic gold isn't terribly complex. I'm going mostly for direct light and I'm not adding in a whole lot of extra shine or light play here because we're dealing with very small areas. One of the things that I do want to note is that I'm starting with whole red, but the darkest tone should actually be that matte black. So where you think there should be more shade after you've applied the Averland Sunset, go ahead and shade that in with a mixture of that matte black and whole red that whole red is kind of a reddish brown so you can mix that up to the Averland sunset so you'll notice at this point I'm really focusing on the Averland sunset and getting that mixed in once I've got everything knocked out as far as shade and Averland sunset then I will move on to adding a little bit of that golden yellow to the very highest areas and some specular highlights using that ivory
and we'll skip around a little bit here. There are a couple of bits of metallic on the Plague Surgeon that I actually want to bring in as a non-metallic copper. The biggest thing that I can point out here are the shoulder sensors as well as the two sensor looking things where the vents are. So what we're going to do here is they've already been blocked in with mahogany. Now we're going to add a little bit of burnt orange to the top and then kind of highlight out through orange and some specular highlights using ivory. Hit the edges on the sensors where the little holes are with the ivory and the orange, or at least a little mixture thereof. But the idea is to give a little bit of a light tone towards the top where most of the light should be hitting. So that burnt orange will start that, and then the orange itself will finish it with a slight, just specular highlight using that ivory.
once you're happy with this, we'll just move on and hit some of the other little bits. There's some bells here and some other things. You can hit as much or as little as you want with this. So we're bringing in gold and copper non-metallic metals here. All right, it's time to start touching up a little bit of the metallics here. We're gonna get out some of our steel and our aluminum. Now, the steel that we had placed down earlier, you might want to hit that with a little bit of the Magimix in some of the larger panels that we hit, or in some of the recesses. But for now, we're gonna focus mostly on bringing the steels back up to where they were using the steel to get it back to the base tone, and then the aluminum as a highlight tone. Alright, now I'm just kind of going through and hitting final details here. Make sure you've got all of your edge highlights in there. Make sure you've got all of your highlights for your metallics and all of your metals done. All of your little bits and bobs and doodads. There's a lot of little maggots. There's some cords and cables. There are tears and divots and pitting in the armor. So this is the time to just go through and check and make sure you have everything locked in. So I'm doing that right now. I'm actually adding a little bit of depth to a lot of the pitting on the armor doing some edge highlighting here again using that necrotite green and golden yellow where appropriate and then we're gonna finish this up and throw it on a base
right, looking pretty good. So let's go ahead and throw this on a base. I've got one built and prepared and painted up for him. We're just gonna have to drop a pin through his foot and attach him to the final product. And here we go. We've also added a little bit of realistic water from Woodland Scenics. And the base is painted and the plague surgeon is attached. This is ready for play, ready for display. So thank you so much again for joining me. Thank you for listening to me ramble on about my own warbands scheme. And if you enjoy this, I will be back again next week with some more videos. Until then, paint some minis.